Hello everyone and welcome to My Place on the Internet, where I am your host, Peter aka the Mutton Shop Guy, where I have no one sponsoring me because in all honesty, I don't know how people get sponsorships and what do I look like to you? Somebody who knows what they're doing on the internet? I, I, I don't know how to internet. <laughs> Today I bring you a very interesting manga because if you look at the art style just from the cover that I'm showing you right now, you can see that it comes from a much older era of manga, you know, known as the late 80s, early 90s. Unfortunately, I can't really pinpoint where this one actually comes from because as unfortunate as it is, this information to the West is not as available as it is in Japan. And, and I, I also don't know how to read Japanese, so me trying to use Japanese sites is not good. And if anyone's out there trying to tell me that I should use Google Translate to help me go through these Japanese sites, that Google Translate is terrible when it comes to Japanese, okay? It's just, oh boy. So today we're going to be talking about this manga, known as Urisen by Pantaro. And unfortunately, like I said, I can't find much information about this manga, so... You know, if, if you guys have any information about this particular manga, I would love for you guys to let me know what it is because I would like to provide that information, but I can't because I live here in the States, and fortunately when it comes to gay komi, that information is extremely limited to the West, especially here in the States, for some reason, and it makes me deeply, deeply depressed because I would like to, you know, provide that information because, surprisingly enough, a good amount of people want to know. Our story begins, at least with what we have available to us, with seeing somebody thrown to the ground by another rough looking character. You really get to see the late 80s, early 90s art style aesthetic right off the bat as well. Then we see one of our main characters, Shibazawa, with his date and a colleague talk about the person on the ground as the person from earlier. What do you mean from earlier? Uh, it's because the opening appears to be missing and that, that's... That's what, this is what we have available to us, or at least to me. But don't worry, things will come into view, eventually. Well, we're waiting. So Shibazawa tells his friend to take the ladies out for sushi, and decides to help the guy, just for his date to complain about promising a good time. Gee, I wonder what good time they're talking about. And he even mentions that she told her mom that she was going to be working late. Wait. How old are you if you're still living with your mom? Whoa, 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 whoa. Anyways, so Shibazawa intrudes on the fight, and after explaining how he knows the dude on the ground, the wannabe looking biker punk dude, I wish I kind of worded that better, but I'm not going to, tries to land a punch on him. Shibazawa catches the punch in his hand and returns the favor with a big bitch slap to the face. Come on with it. Two more guys try to strike, and boom, pow, both guys are down. Shibazawa then tells all the rest of the gang that are hiding around the corner to come get their friends. Shibazawa then checks on the guy, who is our second main character, Shuhei. Tries to find out where he lives, cops start to arrive, so he resorts to taking him back to his apartment. And Shibazawa, of course, chooses the stairs to take him to his floor, which I find hilarious how this scene is drawn like, <laughs> look at him go! He then gets into his apartment without being seen by his neighbors, keeping his reputation intact, because that's important for some reason. As he enters into his apartment, Shuhei begins to wake up, and then starts to freak out because he doesn't want Shibazawa hurting him, resulting in a fall that conks Shuhei out again. <laughs> Way to go there buddy, you just, you, you have one job. They're checking for injuries just to see that it's a bump on the head, and getting in a dig on Shuhei's intelligence while telling him that he needs to avoid thugs like those back on the streets. Feeling awkward for scaring Shuhei, Shibazawa has him go take a bath, and he pulls an innuendo on Shibazawa, which I'm like, what? Really? Are, are we really doing this right now? Like, come on. So, he takes a shower, comes out, and Shibazawa tells him to take off his shirt, which he goes even further and takes off his pants as well. And I have to say, Shibazawa's face is just priceless. He's just like... <laughs> So Shibazawa asks Shuhei to be messing with him by stripping, which he responds with no and he wouldn't do that to a Yakuza member. Ah, that explains why he needed to keep his reputation intact. Fucking idiot. Showing that he has a bruise on his butt and that he can't reach it. 
What do you mean you can't reach that? You, you, it's right there. You're pointing right at it. What you you can't tell me that you can't reach that by pointing at the Oh come on. What is wrong with you? So Shuhei treats him, goes and takes a shower of his own, and finds Shuhei on his balcony, staring off into the distance while remarking on Yasu-san being an idiot. Remember that name as it comes back up later. This is where we're finally introducing the characters to each other and discuss about the Yakuza boss that Shibazawa works for, and how he's been happy since Shuhei showed up with him. This explains why Shibazawa got involved in the first place, as it would keep his boss happy to protect him. Shuhei starts venting to Shibazawa, stating that he was heartbroken before he was found getting beat up. Shibazawa then interrupts him, tells him that he doesn't care for who he falls in love with, and walks inside. Wow, look how annoyed these two are getting with each other, I wonder where this is going. Anyways, they're both are just sitting there, Shibazawa is reading, and Shuhei is doing... nothing, just, just sitting there. After some banter, Shuhei goes and eats something, and Shibazawa remarks on how much of a brat he is being. Oh wow, what an observation, dude. So he then realizes what time it is and decides that it is time to go to bed for both of them. And while they're sleeping in the same bed, mind you, Shuhei drapes his arms over Shibazawa, mumbling about Yasuzan again. During the night, Shibazawa is awakened by some noises, which he finds out that it's Shuhei, um, providing services to him. God, I hate having to put it in this way. Ugh. And then what happened? So Shibazawa tries to get him off of him. Just for Shuhei to get more forward by saying that Shibazawa can't do anything about it if he doesn't want his boss to find out. Which Shibazawa then gives in? And then we get this whole macho display flexing sequence and he gets tired from that, which I, I'm just like, what? <laughs> so Shuhei decides to tie up Shibazawa and proceeds to do various crazy things that escalate very quickly. Like, what the hell is going on? Why is this all happening? Oh. Oh. It's just, it's just a dream. What a way to have a scene like that from the beginning, am I right? I did like seeing she was out of flex though. It was just like, <clears throat> <clears throat> Okay, so Shibuzawa tries to calm down from his dream, which he finds out that he also had a wet dream. I'm not explaining that one. Go take a sexual education class, as I would feel better from you actually getting better education and not from me. Because what, what do I look like to you guys? An educator? And freaks out when Shuhei investigates alongside him, freaking him out. Which leaves us with each person thinking that there is something wrong with the other one. Yeah, this is already weird and confusing. But don't worry, it gets... better? So it's the next day, Shibazawa and Shuhei have breakfast, get dressed, and they head off to Shinjuku. I really hope I'm not butchering that name either, but most likely am. As they are driving, Shuhei asks if he did something to upset Shibazawa, to which Shibazawa explains that he didn't and that he isn't into men. He also says that it's normal, but we're just going to ignore that part because it insinuates straights is on the only normal. Anyways, he makes a comment about if he ever would sleep with a man that he would take up Shuhei's services first. Which this causes an awkward moment just to be dismissed as a joke between the two. And I mean, just look how much he's sweating from over that statement. Come on man, just, just say it, you know you wanna. No. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. No. No, 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 hell no, 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 I refuse, no, no. Okay, so it's the next weekend and Shuhei arrives at the hotel. And Shuhei goes up to the top floor having an interesting conversation with the operator of the elevator. Which I'm sure is referring to a part that we didn't get to see because it's, it's missing. He sees Shibuzawa and company sitting outside the boss's office. Shuhei gives back Sh Shibuzawa's clothes and heads into the office. Shibuzawa's co-workers talk about the bag and he explains the situation, only to find a teddy bear with an interesting looking scar on its eye. Hmm. So as Shibuzawa tells off his co-workers by throwing away the bear, Shuhei is consoling with the boss over what happened last time and begins to perform his services to him. Man, it's just not a good way to explain this, is there? This is all to explain Shuhei's type in men and how, to, how he gets attached to his customers he likes as his type, while also showing how the relationship between the boss and Shuhei develops, which is kind of sweet in all things considered, however that's for you to decide. 
Shibazawa gets irritated about having to wait even longer than he anticipated and gets into this whole spat with his co-workers and then decides to go and get more cigarettes. While he does, you see how people respond to his presence. Which is funny when you see the adults cower and the kid offers candy. It's like big scary gangster or big giant teddy bear? Oh, I get the bear now! Congratulations! Wee! Wee! So, as Shibazawa is driving home processing his conversation that he had with his boss about Shuhei being off limits, yeah, that, that was a thing. Shibazawa, of course, is contemplating his decision to help out Shuhei when he asked the teddy bear that he thought, Hey, he kept it! Awesome! That was cute. I liked that. I liked that a lot. So, after a few months of business, we notice that Shibazawa is avoiding Shuhei, who is also noticed. And then Shibazawa makes time to spend with his co-workers to make up for less time. You know, the time at the very beginning of the story that we, we saw. And after spending some time with his lady friend, Shuhei shows up to his apartment! So they sit down, the lady leaves, and this is where things come to a head. No pun intended, of course, because I know a lot of people are going to take it that way. Shuhei tells Shibazawa that he's been feeling for him, and that he knows that he's been avoiding him. So, Shibazawa explains that he does have feelings for him, learning that he's also a bisexual. Woo, bisexual pride, yeah! <laughs> And that it is dangerous for them to have feelings for each other, due to the boss being je a jealous person in nature. Tensions flare up between both of them and we get an actual love scene with these two, which goes on for a while. After that, they spend time talking about Shibazawa's past. This is where we learn about what happened to his wife and son, which is pretty sad in all things considered, in that he was a sole survivor of a shooter that a rival gang did to him while he was in the car with his family. After learning that, Shibazawa proposes running away from everything and finding a place where no one can find them. He proposes this because now that they're both in danger of the same fate that happened to his wife and son. Wow, things get really intense when it comes to gangs. Welcome to my wife! <laughs> Shuhei agrees and heads back to his house to pack. While packing, someone shows up and it turns out to be Yasu-san from earlier in the manga. But we only knew his name and never actually saw him before because, you know, it, it, it's missing. Yasu-san explains that the guy he left with didn't work out for him and now he has to return to Finland. Wait, Finland? Why were you needed to go there? What the? Huh? What the hell's going on here? Huh? So Shuhei acts out in anger because how things are left off between them and wants Yasu-san to leave. Of course, Yasuzon apologizes for everything that he did and tells Shuhei that he hopes he finds happiness. Then we see Shibuzawa with another guy, explaining that he never saw Shuhei again, and that it worked out for everyone? Yeah, this is... this gets weird, but we'll, we'll get to that. He explains that he was able to get out of the Yakuza business without any problems, and when he asks if he still thinks of Shuhei, he denies it while looking over at the same teddy bear that he was given. And that's how it ends? That can't be it. Where's the rest of it? Okay, so yeah, there, there's a lot of things to unpack here. So, I also read the comment section when it came to this particular manga, and a lot of people were kind of confused of how the ending went. Okay, so, if it wasn't that clear to you that Yasu-san did sh show him back up, explaining that he wanted to get back with Shuhei, and Shuhei actually disappearing at the end of the story is that he actually went to Finland with Yasu-san. Now, if you're wondering why is this a good thing in terms of the story, well, I'm pretty sure Shuhei actually kind of contemplated the thought process that if he still decided to go with Shibazawa, that they would still be on the run and be hunted down by the Yakuza. At least that was what was kind of implicated to me. So running off with Yasu-san, not only saves Shibazawa from the same danger and himself from the same danger, but he was actually able to be with the love that he had in the beginning. Yeah, see this is why it's so confusing because there's no actual opening that's the proper intro to the story to explain a lot of the stuff. So, if you know this story and you know where to find the very opening chapters of this, this particular manga series, that would be great because I, I would kind of like to have that information filled in for me. 
But regardless of that, I do find this manga very interesting and I do kind of like the ending because in a way it showed Shuhei showing a level of maturity and understanding the implications and the delicate situation that he was finding himself in affiliating with the Yakuza. But not only that, that Shibazawa is actually able to get out of that terrible business, or at least he called it a terrible business, which, come on, gang activity is not necessarily a good thing. Even though, you know, we have things in history from like Escobar. <laughs> you know, technically if you actually look at the history of Escobar and the Colombian cocaine thing during the 80s, yeah, the American DEA kind of sees him as a horrible monster, as the people of the village that he was residing nearby see him as the Robin Hood type hero. You know, so keep take that as you will. But I do think that he, you know, Shuhei was actually able to show some level of maturity by running off with Yasuzan because it allowed not only for his life to be in safety because they're not going to find him in Finland, at least I don't think, but it allowed Shibazawa to actually live on without having to, you know, be on the constant run. And in the end, Shibazawa did find somebody else to be with, so, you know, there's that. Yeah, it's, it's kind of strange. But I will certainly say I do like this manga in particular just because, one, <laughs> the art style is kind of, kind of just gives me this level of nostalgia. I mean, like, as weird as it sounds, it does give me that old Dragon Ball Z, you know, drawing style that's from the, the 90s. And, you know, I am a 90s baby, so kind of seeing that stuff gives me the nostalgia tingles. Yeah, I know I'm weird. Just, just what, what are you going to do about it? The other reason why I wanted to showcase this manga in particular is because this one definitely showcases a lot of the typical tropes during the time period that when this one came out. Or what it at least appears to be coming from with the art style and the story plot lines that we tend to see during the late 80s and early 90s of Gay Komi, which was a lot of gangster mentality type stuff and power dynamics that we see within this particular manga. And I find it very interesting to be able to find something like this, and I certainly hope that I'm able to find more of this particular time period within Geikomi's lifespan because I definitely, once again, like to show the roots of where this genre started from and what it developed over time. And this manga is a really good showcase of that. Wow! That was amazing! So I certainly hope you guys enjoyed this particular manga as much as I have. If you don't really like it because it's missing a lot of parts, I can understand that. However, you know, I, I certainly hope with me trying to bring more visibility to this particular manga that we can actually get the parts that are missing from it so we can actually have the full story. Because, you know, this one definitely showed me how important it is to have that intro. But yeah, I think that's pretty much everything I need to cover. I certainly hope you guys enjoy what I had to do in this episode. I want to just say thank you to everybody who has subscribed to my channel so far. You guys are absolutely amazing. Just, I, I, I don't know what I should do. Um, I was thinking that if I made it to 500 or 1,000 subscribers that I would do like some special live stream. Uh, if I do, I was thinking of a video game that I kind of find as one of my newly beloved video games when it comes to one of my most beloved consoles ever on the Dreamcast called Skies of Arcadia. So let me know down in the comments if you guys are totally down for me doing like a live stream playing one of my favorite JRPGs on Dreamcast because it's, it's, it, it's you know, it, yeah, it's a great story and I think it's probably one of the funnest games on the Dreamcast that I've played in a very long while and so like to hear what you guys like to do, you know, it's, it's one of the things, engagement. The other thing I want to point out is that um, I just want to give a huge shout out to everybody who's in my manga server on Discord. Uh, you guys are awesome. Uh, I really like talking to you guys because you guys really help me out on a lot of things and I really like that you guys are sharing more content on this particular genre with each other in the sections that I have for them. Don't mention it! One last thing before I close off this episode is I noticed that a lot of you guys have been recommending me some stuff. 
especially when it comes to Steam or other platforms. And I come to the realization that this stuff also costs some money. And while yes, I did start a new job very recently, uh, that's to help with the bills because bills got really, really crazy this past year and here in the States. And I don't think I need to go into much more explanation on that. I'm pretty sure you guys can figure out what's going on. <laughs> But if you have a recommendation for like a visual novel or any video game type thing out there on Steam because I know there's a lot more of that stuff on Steam, you, you can help me out by helping me purchase these games by donating to my Ko-Fi. You know, if you donate to my Ko-Fi, you, you can also, you know, suggest the next thing I review. It's, one, it's there for a reason, so if you want to help me out, you can help me out. But other than that, if you guys like what I'm doing, please follow me on my social media. I swear I try to to do social media, but I apparently really just am not so good at it. So sorry if I'm just a boring person on, on, on the internet. I, I, I try my best. But yeah, you, you, you can follow me on Instagram or Reddit or Tumblr because yeah, I, I, I do tend to use Tumblr from time to time. It's there for a reason. But other than that, thank you to everybody who's been watching and following me so far. I'm sorry that this took so long for me to do. Uh, September was a rough month for me and without going into much detail, I had to say goodbye to a dearly beloved pet of mine. and. Uh, as much as I, I will appreciate people who, who share their condolences with me, um, I have, I've kind of done my, my time to mourn over him and I just don't want to have something like that stop me from making content, but it, it, it took a lot out of me to even make this episode. So, but other than that, thank you guys so much for watching and slash listening to my do my ramblings on manga, especially when it comes to the big and burly kind because it doesn't get enough attention. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoy yourself and I hope to see you guys all in my next episode. Uh, bye bye.